Okay then, a skeleton clock. Right, I haven't done a clock in a while. Um, well, what I'm going to do with this one is I have an idea in my head. Right. And what I'm going to use is some tamarind off cuts I have. Uh, it should turn out pretty nice. So uh, what I'll do is I'll melt this up. I need to do the piece around the clock first and then the stand. So I'll uh, stick this piece on, round it off. I'm really going on with it. So I'll mount it up and I'll be back in a sec. Right, now the first thing I'm going to do is round it off. Right, it's rounded off. Now the whole thing about this is this is far too wide for what I want. And it of course has the normal tamarind cracks in it. So I'll cut this down to the width I want, which is probably about that. And then I'll treat those cracks. Anybody who's ever worked with tamarind or has seen me using it before knows that this stuff is Basically, you can't get it without cracks in it. And every time you use it, you have the three cracks. Now what I need is... I need to get the size to insert that into. Take the back off to do that. Now I need to get the width. Roughly. What I'm gonna do is I'll uh, go below the size I need and then as normal if I'm putting a hole in something I'll creep up on it. Now I need to follow in here a fair bit. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a second. Right then, I have this taken down to where the clock fits into it. Now if you look there, there's two rims. There's an outer rim and an inner rim. What I have to do is get the outside of this hole so that that inner rim slips inside of it, but that it sits on the outer rim. So this is a nibble it down job until you get it. There we go, now I got it. Right, so to deepen it slightly. Right. Yeah, deepen it very slightly.
Yeah, that's it. No clock face sitting in there, was. Now, next thing is I need to mark the width. So to do that, I need to slip that back on, and I need to mark the outside here. There's a point I want to put my pencil. There it is. Pull an edge on this pencil thing. Now, sorry, hold the camera. That is the width I need to put the back on. So I'll just give myself a mark there. Right. That's the width I need for the clock itself. So now I can start some shaping. I like um, kind of simple shapes on clocks. I don't like to make them super fancy. Now, come in there a bit. Right. Leave myself a little bit so that I can insert it. Now, what I have to do here is make sure that this internal one is deeper than that. Which it's not, it needs to just be a slight bit deeper. Because when I part this off, the only thing I want to do is have to sand that side. Close, but I don't think it's it.
Now I want to roll that side a little bit as well. Some of this out of the way. So I can finish rolling that. Maybe throw it a little bit more. Now I'm going to sand that piece. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, this week's Yorkshire grip bit is quite short because I need to kind of introduce a character from Irish Legends that appears in quite a lot of them. And for some of the legends to make sense, you need to know who this is. Right, now the character I'm going to tell you about is called the Morrigan. Right, now the Morrigan, according to Irish legends, is the Celtic goddess of war. Right, she can foretell the death or victory of a warrior in a battle and can often be seen washing the blood stained clothes of fallen warriors. You know, she's also a shape changer who is kind of her favourite shape is that of a crow. And again she can be seen picking over the bodies on a battlefield after uh, a battle or flying over the battlefield uh, basically spying on the enemy before the fight even starts now, it depends on which side she's on because she does pick sides uh, so she's kind of strange that way for a god like if there's two kind of Irish clans fighting she'll pick one to be on the side of Uh, right now if she was seen flying over the battlefield right I would say probably both sides thought she was on their side but it would have the effect of basically striking fear into the warriors below her this crow or it would spur them on to even greater feats uh, and hopefully to win the battle now she's often depicted as three goddesses in one the three sisters right one being the goddess of war the other being the goddess of fate and the third being the goddess of death right their names were morrigan of course Bath and Maka. Right now, there are suggestions that a number of fictional characters are based on the Morrigan, including the legend in the legend of King Arthur, Morgan Le Fay. Right now, in a lot of English legends, fairies are referred to as Fay. Right, and of course, anything in an Irish legend, any creature around is a fairy so if you translate morrigan the fairy to the english version of uh, legends you get morrigan the fae 
or Morgan Le Fay. Right. Uh, now, it is also a matter of conjecture that a character in quite a famous book and TV series is also based on the Morrigan. And that would be the Red Woman Melisandre from the Game of Thrones. Because an awful lot of similarities are between them, so it's highly possible that the character was based on the Morrigan. Right. Uh, especially seen as how in one of her iterations in Irish Legend, she can be seen wandering through battlefields in a flowing red dress. Right. Now, she, as I said, she, I'm trying to introduce her because she appears in a lot of Irish Legends, right? Uh, one of the main ones, she was basically the cause of it, was uh, the Cattle Ride Legend. The other word escapes me. Oh, God. It's the Cattle Ride of something, but the word escapes me now, right? And she's also have... Uh, reported to have been in an, basically an on off, an on and off relationship with Coo Cullen, who we introduced last week, which is why I'm doing the two of these together. Right, now, uh, she is one of the main players in what is referred to as the Ulster Cycle of Irish Legends, which is kind of the stuff I'm going to be going into in the next few weeks. So, that's a quick introduction, as I said, it's a short one. It's a quick introduction to the Morrigan. And uh, as I said, she'll be appearing over the next few weeks. So at least now you know who she is. So I'll get on with this and I'll be back in a minute. And then just put the wax off. Uh, I really do love the way this wood goes when it's walked. It's a pity I can't get any more of it. I said, these are just half cuts of the bowls that I did. Out of it. But uh, it's a really a stunning wood. I love the way it goes into walk, as I said. The black's really popping it after it's been walked. It's absolutely gorgeous wood altogether. Alright then, now what I want to do is part that off. basic ring. Now I have to flip it around and finish off that side. So I'll stick a truck on and I'll be back in a sec. Now I thought I'd better show you this. Right, When you're putting the truck on what you're aiming for is you want the front part of the truck resting on that edge and the jaws of the truck hitting the outside there. Sometimes it works out just nicely like that one. Sometimes it can be a bit fiddly. But you've got to remember that not to put too much pressure on it. Because it's not exactly held on too well. Now I can get to finish this side of it. First thing I'm going to do is continue that round slightly and then I have to, no actually it's not the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the insert for this, for the back, right, because that has to go in there, 
like so. All right. So we get the calipers and mark a little less than the width of this, and then do the same thing again. Creep up on it. deeper and we have it so remember we marked the outside of this clock face on the outside of this piece slightly so I'm just creeping up on this because I want the fit to be perfect there we go nice and flush now I'll finish off the, that side of that. Just finish around it off and then sand here. The part that I'm just gonna cut. Sand and finish there. There we go, that's around it. Now I'll sand and finish that what I just cut. And that'll be that piece nearly finished. That part of the clock anyway, nearly finished. Alright, so I'll do that and we'll be back in a sec. Alright now, just broken the wax off the last bit of this. And then we'll see if it fits. Which it should do. So, and the back is just as pretty as the front. Right, then we'll just check this off this together. That's the front. Take these clock parts. Right. Face of the clock fits in nicely. And the back of the clock fits in and there's no movement. Which is exactly what I'm looking for. So there we have the top part of the clock. Now we go on to the foot of the clock. So in order to do that I need to put this back on the lead just to hold it while I'm drilling a hole in it. Now I need to drill a hole in that so that I can put the uh, base onto it. That should be okay. Now all I need is a small hole for uh, a spigot to go into. Now where do I want the top at? That's the question. 
Is that prettier or is the black prettier? I think that's the prettiest piece there. So we'll drill a hole there. Drill a hole right there. Doesn't need to be that deep. It's literally just a gluing point. I did not want to go inside of it. Yeah. One bit of a lock. Right. And there we have the first part of the clock ready to go. Now we're going on to the second bit. Second part is going to be from another off cut. So I'll uh, set this up and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, I got this off cut between centers. I'm just going to round it off, put a tenon on it, and stick it in the chuck. So I'll just slide it up it. Fill in the chuck now. Now, anybody who's been on the who's followed the channel for a while knows my theory on wood. Okay. So, Pretty wood needs a simple shape, and simple wood needs a pretty shape. Right? Uh, if you try and put, well, this is my opinion anyway. If you try and put a really complicated shape onto pretty wood, you can take away from the wood speaking for itself, which really pretty wood can do very well. Just putting an edge on this. Really pretty wood, if it's allowed, can speak for itself. But it has to be allowed to. That's my opinion on it anyway. So I'm going to keep the shape of this clock simple. Very simple. Because tamarind is really pretty wood. Now where did I put that piece? Um, over there. Right. Right. Now the first thing I want to do is put the uh, tenon on the top to fit in there so that I know where I can work to glue down nicely yeah there we go now we can shape this and what I'm looking for is as I said a simple shape I'm just looking for a scoop
small so i'm not looking for this to be super tall which is why i'm using a piece that's this small a little taller maybe than that Just a bit closer. Pick up the fork and bring it in more. See how that looks. Yep. Not bad at all. That is roughly what I'm looking for. It's a simple shape. Pretty wood, simple shape. Right. You know, that cut there needs to be approved slightly. It's not great. This is just a roughing cut. Now we'll sand and finish that. So I'll do that, be back in a sec. Right then, just buffing the wax off this bit. Now as you'll see, I've put some tape around that uh, tenon at the top, around the spigot at the top, uh, because you do not want finish getting onto it. And that's actually, that's a good tip to do, because finish could possibly affect the gluing surfaces. So you try and keep them as raw wood as possible. Right. And there's the base. Now all it's left to do is part that off. And then finish the bottom and put the whole thing together. Undercut slightly so that it only sits on the rim. Bit too fast. Right. Take a relief cut. So they don't bind up. Now let's think relief cuts do not have to be huge. All you're doing is giving a little bit of space to the tool. Of the base 
Now I just got to sand the bottom of that and put the whole thing together. So I'll do that and be back in a sec. Right, and there we have a pretty little skeleton clock. Uh, as I said, I kept the shape simple because the wood so pretty. I didn't want to take away from the wood. And uh, yeah, I quite like that one. So if you liked the video, if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.